10, if not more, years. Um, it's just an absolute honor that um, she is joining us today. Uh, Loretta is the author of a book called Being My Mom's Mom. And I believe she brought books today. Did you bring? Okay. So I'm actually going to purchase some from Loretta, and we're going to have some door prizes throughout the day. So we'll, we'll do some of that. But also, if you'd like to purchase a book from Loretta, you can do that. Um, I, I know you all have the bios of all the speakers, so you can read that yourself. It's in your packets. But I, I, she is so inspirational. You guys are just so, so lucky, and I know you're going to love her. She's amazing. So, Loretta, thanks for being here, and take it away. I really hate introductions because then that means you have to live up to them. Yeah. Ah. Well, thank you all for being here today. I have forewarned lots of you that we are going to do some work this morning. Are you all ready to do some work? It'll be fun. Yeah. Several of you gave me the side eye mm. <laughs> when I said there was work involved today, but I, I'm so grateful for uh, Ellen, not only her introduction, but you know, just being friends over the years and always being uh, open to new strategies and, you know, learning. I just think I went out. Thank you. Okay. So clearly I can't run all around here with this microphone, but I really am grateful for this opportunity to share something that we have become, I say we, meaning my mother and I, have become fairly famous for, and it's called Lego Serious Play. So when Ellen asked me if I would do this today, and I said, well, which thing do you want me to do? She said, the Lego thing, of course. Okay, so I know sometimes I'll, I'll be in the airport and somebody say, that's the Lego lady. <laughs> so I'm happy to have that name now. That, that is my name. So um, I'm going to expose you to this. If I can turn this on, how about that? Oh, no, maybe we won't. It's on. No, hold on. There we go. You know, just got to give it a minute. It's got to warm up. So I know um, some of you are in the back and can't really see, so I'll just read it for you. As part of being, building hope today, what we're going to do is I'm first going to give you just a little bit about our story, how this whole thing came to be. And then we are going to talk about a little bit about what the Lego group is and how this Lego serious play thing actually works. And then guess what? You're going to get a little bag of Legos and you're going to build some stuff. How about that? <laughs> Woo! -hoo! All right. So cool. I love the woohoos in here. And, and as you can see, lots of people smiling. I didn't pay them to smile. So it, it, it really is a lot of fun. And I hope you really enjoy um, not only it today, but that you can take it back and help other people build hope as well. So. The, uh, why is it going the wrong way? There we go. All right. How many of you have ever felt like giving up in your caregiving lifestyle, whether you're a professional or family caregiver? Show a hand. Well, yeah, definitely. We're going to be really honest in this group today. And so on my website, it says, I help caregivers move from that I give up mindset to I got this. And so by the end of the day, I hope we'll all be saying that. So it's just one of the... Um, things I think is most challenging about caregiving is that sometimes we feel alone. So hopefully we will um, be able to conquer that um, a little bit. So our 16 year journey, this is my mom, Doris, and she was diagnosed, I have to make sure where I stand so the people over there, can, can you all see? Yeah. Okay. This would not be my favorite place to stand, but this might work. So my mom was 77 years old in 2006 when she was diagnosed with dementia. And one of the things that um, you know, happens to you when you get this dementia diagnosis is that you're terrified. And my mother just looked devastated when the guy says, you were in the beginning stages of dementia. And the only thing I could promise my mother, I mean, I, don't, I didn't know anything about the disease at the time, so the only thing I really could promise her that I had no idea what was going to happen, but whatever it was, we were going to do it together. I promised her not only would we 
do it together one day at a time, but that we'd also have a lot of joy along the way. And uh, unfortunately for me, uh, that journey ended on January 31st of this year. But that 16 years, when I look back on it, we absolutely had a lot of fun. And most of that had to do with the Lego brick. So there is, <laughs> she is with her favorite thing, the little Lego brick. She did Lego all the way up until the day of her death. Now that's what you've been really been in love with something, right? Okay. So... The, um, the Lego history for us started when I was five. And my mom gave me a box of Lego bricks. And I, I learned later that she probably had to save a long time to get that. Because as you know, Legos really aren't the cheapest thing out there. But she got me this box. And my mom and I are very different personality-wise. As you know, I've tried to speak to just about everybody in this room. I bounced around. I promised you that you'd have to work hard. And, but we had a lot of fun, too. My mother was uh, not people-friendly, as I always used to say. And so one of the things that I found early on, probably I was probably 9 or 10 years old, and I noticed that my mom you know, first uh, found her words when she was upset about something or she was stressed or she was depressed. We talked about depression. My mother was depressed a lot when I was growing up. And, but when you got the Lego bricks out, all of that seemed to go away. It was a very calming and very you know, fun, but we uncovered a lot of things and we talked through a lot of difficult things. I made the announcement that she was gonna have to move with a bucket of Lego bricks in front of us. And I built why she had to move and had to do a lot with safety. And so she really understood through those bricks. So in 2014, that was the first year my mother forgot who I was. So for the last seven years of her life, my name was Very Nice Person. <laughs> and people are like, oh, that's so sad. It really is that sad because I have a lot of friends whose parents call them a lot of other things. So I'm really, 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 really happy with Very Nice Person. Now, here's the thing. In spite of the fact that she had no idea who I was by then, whenever you got the Lego bricks out, that blank stare would disappear and my mother would come back. And everybody came to see it. The picture at the top with my husband and my mom was taken by the Washington Post. So, you know, if she was, you know, just sitting in a room and she'd have that blank stare and the moment I would get the bricks out, you know, she would just come back. So the Post came to see it, the New York Times, Psychology Today, the Wall Street Journal. And then it was just, you know, it just kept going from there. So even though she didn't know who I was, she could talk about memories. She could share stories about her childhood that I had never heard, but only when you had the Lego bricks out. The New York Times guy was actually a little upset when he came. You know, she was doing a puzzle and she didn't even acknowledge he was in the room and she was just kind of staring straight ahead. And he was like, I drove all this way and she's not doing anything. <laughs> so he finally says, you know, well, let me see the Lego bricks. I get the bricks out, I pour them on the table and just like I said, she comes right back. And then she notices him in the room. He'd been there an hour. And she says, oh, hello, like, like he had just got there. And he says, wow, I thought you made that up. I really didn't. So one of the greatest lessons my mother gave to my sister and I was, when you find a strategy that works, you don't keep it to yourself. You share it with other people. And so I thought my goal from that point on was to bring hope to other people too. So I've done a, um, this Lego serious play thing for AARP, the Alzheimer's Association, adult daycare centers. My largest client's probably Johns Hopkins. I was their trailblazer of the year in 2019. This is, um, I live in the state of Maryland in Prince George's County. This is the Alzheimer's Association of Greater Maryland. We had 30 or so caregivers on there. And we were building hope and superpowers. And this is Baltimore County Department of Aging. They have a thing called Living Creatively with Dementia. I've worked both with the folks with dementia and the folks who care for them. And what I always found stunning about this is, you know, people just uncover great things and they share things that they may not otherwise share. So I want you to feel like this is a really safe space for you today to share some of the things we're going to talk about. And this is the largest group. You may know that Home Instead was bought by a company called Honor last year. This is the largest 
group I've ever done. At the same time, 78 people, and they were building a better team so that they could serve those who need assistance in their homes better. And boy, that was probably one of the most amazing things that I've ever done. But here is what people all talk about. Last year, I'm not sure how this happened, but my mom and I were selected as part of Robin Roberts Thriver Thursday series for an innovative way of learning to communicate. And so hearing Robin Roberts say my name, and my mother said, I'm famous. <laughs> yeah, girl, you famous for your, this your five minutes. Enjoy it. And what just amazing. And the whole tagline was really just we had lost our familial connection. But we never lost that connection with the bricks. So every day I'd come and I said, we're gonna build love today. And she would say, okay. <laughs> and we would do that every day. And so the fact that other people have enjoyed it too is just, you know, um, just a dream for me that I have been able to share this around the country. Uh, so it's just been amazing for us. All right, let's get started. So let me tell you a little teeny bit about the Lego group. Some people do not know that uh, the Lego Group is not a U.S. company. It was created by Ole Kirk Christensen in Denmark. It's right outside Copenhagen. I've been to headquarters three times. It was created in 1932, but here's the funny thing. I don't know what that man was doing for three years. He didn't name it until 1935, but when he finally did choose a name, wow, did he choose a great name. He took two Danish words, leg and goot, to make Lego. And, ooh, really cool. And in English, Lego means, for those of you who can't see in the back, it means to play well. How about that? And that is what I have tried to do from, you know, the day I started using it. I didn't just use it with folks with dementia. I uh, retired in 2021 from a 40-year security career. I worked for Homeland Security for 10 years. I did a lot of training for border control, for customs, and all kinds of stuff like that. But this is the work I am called to do. But I always did Lego tabletop exercises and things like that. So Lego has been pretty much my whole life. So one of the interesting things about um, Lego series in play and how it came about. In 1999, Lego was chosen as Toy of the Century. That's a cool title, and most people would be really happy with that. But they, I don't want to say they weren't happy, but that's not really what they wanted. They wanted to be the number one toy company in the world, and they were not. That belonged to the Barbie people, Mattel. So they thought, okay, listen, we're going to look at our internal processes to see how we can be better, be faster, bigger, stronger, whatever they wanted to be. All right, so the same year, 1999, they decided they're going to look at how to improve themselves. So they asked several people who had been at Lego more than 20 years to leave and spin off and do this consultancy, which it had a lot of additions, but today is the name Lego Serious Play. And they finally did eventually with making some of the, these adjustments that they gained from looking at themselves internally, they eventually did uh, catch Mattel, but that didn't happen until 2014 when the first Lego movie came out. So between now and uh, since then and now, and they just go back and forth with it. What I admire about what they did was, even though they were pretty much at the top, they still wanted to be better. And I, to, to me, that just spoke caregivers. Because we are great at what we do, but this is a hard job. And so when we look at ourselves, like, oh, we can be better. And here's what I love most about LEGO Serious Play. At the end, if you cannot see that, it says LEGO Serious Play ensures that everyone is included and all voices are heard. So that means, you know, when I go to these assisted living uh, places and conferences, I, you know, Love the fact that so your titles kind of go out the window and everybody's the same around the table. So all of you are going to be building and sharing and um, everybody's equal here. And so I love, you know, you go to a typical meeting sometime and one or two people talk and the rest of the people just sit there. You been to that meeting? Mm -hmm. And people say, well, do you agree with that? Mm -hmm. You really don't agree, but you just don't want to say. Well, today you get to say whatever you want. That's the best part, right? You get to say whatever you want. So. The lessons that I think are great for us about the whole Lego series play creation was that we can always make improvements even, you know, 
when we don't think we can, if we're willing to look at ourselves internally, and I love that. And then the second thing is, let go absolutely believe that when you are trying to solve a problem or resolve a con conflict or get people to know things um, about each other that they didn't know, so team building, whatever it is you're trying to do, they believe the answer is always in the room. Always in the room. So let's see what you all come up with today with some of the things that we are going to do. So our goal for today is really just to make sure we can relax and recharge and reinforce hope. That's what we're going to do. So people always ask me, is Lego Serious Play a real thing? Yes! It was a week-long course. Jesus! It was the hardest I ever had to work. There's my graduating class. It is a real thing. People come from, De uh, from Denmark on the last day to watch you facilitate a session to make sure that you, you can really do it. I feel like all the money we had paid, they should just give it to us, but they didn't. You still had to really work hard. And then who knew COVID was going to come into our lives? I am also trained to do this online as well. And so what I've really done is try to just tweak it to work not only for caregivers, but folks with dementia as well. So here are the four things you need to know, and then we're going to get started. There are only four components to LEGO Serious Play, and you're looking at them. In a minute, I'm going to give you a task. You're going to open your little bag of Lego bricks and everybody's going to build your answer to that task. Then you're going to go around your table and you're going to share your answer with your table. And I'm going to come around and we'll, you know, if you want to share, you know, out loud, you know, we certainly can do that. Well, we should have some time to, to do uh, quite a bit of sharing. And then we're going to reflect. And what do I mean by reflect? As a facilitator, my job is to talk about, you know, things. What do we hear? Uh, you know, if you all have some amazing definitions of whatever it is that we're going to build, maybe a strategy or something that no one else has thought of, you would not believe the answers that people come up with with this package of 56 little Lego bricks. But that's what we're gonna do. So those are the four parts. So show of hands, how many of you are willing to take the task, build, share, and reflect? Show of hands. Everybody, okay, good. See, you did, see, you said you would do it. I'm so proud of you, I just love you. So proud of you. All right, so. Here's how it works. You can say, I'm not creative. Oh my God, I, I didn't know we were going to be doing this today. Here's how, how, here's how this works. It's all about the metaphor, okay? So really, the bricks will become whatever you tell us they are. Look at that brick on the screen. It is uh, the most popular Lego brick. It is called a two by four, two studs at the top and four going down. The most popular Lego brick. So. That might just look like a little green brick to you, but no. Suppose I told you it was an organization or a flower looking to grow, okay? So if you just hold up the little green brick and say, here's my company and we're growing. Yay, we're going to clap and go on to the next person. That's all you have to say. So it's not like, you know, so basically your, you know, your bricks just are whatever you tell us they are. And the funny part is, you know, people say, oh, well, you know, I just don't know how to do that. But it's um, a really cool concept. And if you just say, well, this is, a, you know, whatever, nobody is going to say it doesn't look like that. <laughs> you can think it, but don't say it. Don't say it. You can think it. Don't say that. And then here's what, where the beauty is. I, I'm going to be pretty honest about this. People get really emotional sometimes about what they build. And I think it's because, as I said, I had a little discussion about depression um, with some folks this morning. And one of the things that's so amazing a, a lot of times about caregiving is, you know, it's so draining and it can be so emotional. And so, you know, if you're talking to your best friend and you all are looking at each other and, you know, and they hear you and all that, um, it's different when you have a 3D thing in your hand. And so as you're talking, I'm going to ask you to do a couple different things from how we usually do them. I'm going to ask you today to think with your hands. So you're not really going to, um, you know, people say, well, let me just think about what I'm going to build. Mm -mm. This is a timed 
exercise. So you ain't tired on it. Just click some things together and make up the story as you go. <laughs> right? Seriously. You don't have time to be. People se- Now, a lot of times people with dementia, they'll separate everything by color before they build anything. I love it when they do that. I love watching whatever they do because it's fascinating to watch how they work. Absolutely fascinating. And I'll just give you some incentive by saying one of the ladies with in very late stage dementia, they were building art and they were going to pull it up on the hallways, you know, toward the dining hall. And she built this structure that was upside down, meaning those studs were on the bottom. She had literally turned the whole thing over. I had never seen anybody do that, ever. So I'm so excited. You know, it don't take much to excite me, but I was so excited. So I say, look, yours is upside down. That is so cool. She looks at me. She says, of course it's upside down. It's just like my brain. Oh. Now you pro- yeah, you process that. That's how powerful this thing is. And so and I found out later she taught physics for 36 years at the University of Maryland and she clearly understood that something had disconnected in her brain. But look at what she created though. Absolutely stunning. So you don't have to be that great, just be a little bit great. So it was, it was just so cool. But, but when I say emotional, I think a lot of times there's so much power in the stories that people share. I did something for Genentech a few weeks ago, the drug company, and they, these people had known each other forever. But this man had never told the story about what his personal connection to Alzheimer's was. And you could just see the whole screen on Zoom freeze. People were like, I've known him for 10 years, and he has never told anybody that story. And the whole screen was just stopped. It was amazing. And somebody wrote in the comments, Loretta, you need some Lego Kleenex. (laughs) Lego Kleenex. But anyway, there's a lot of power in the story, and it is also so uplifting. Sometimes, especially even if you have a challenge, and somebody at your table is sharing something, you're like, "Mm, their story is a lot worse than mine. I'm going to just sit here and be quiet. And so sometimes there's inspiration, you know, in other stories, but more so than maybe even you, you know, would get from your own. So that's the whole thing. All right. So it says, grab your bricks. You don't have anything to grab, but we're going to change that. Ella, come on. We didn't want y'all to play with them. We're going to run. All right. So we're going to have some back. Run off. screen. Those are called Lego minifigures. You should have two in your bag somewhere. And I also need you to um, look at the screen for one second. I want you to find the black four-pronged piece that's in this picture. Look for a piece like that. And then you have two gray pieces that have little spokes sticking out of them. I want you to find either one of those pieces and then stick that little hole part, the little um, prong part, into the black piece and the two things will spin. All right, so when you put the the little um, gray piece together, watch, the black piece spins. How about that? So just put the gray piece into the black piece until it clicks, you hear the click, and then it'll spin. So if you want to build anything that's about spinning out of control, or you're spinning your wheels, or you're just uh, spinning with joy, whatever it is, that piece does move. Now, I'm not going to, everybody find those pieces, okay? All right. Did you get it to work? Did it spin around? you anything else about the pieces in the back? You're having way too much fun, but girl, (laughs) she's having way too much fun already. So... You're going to get to know your pieces now with a practice task. Is everyone ready for the practice task? Yes. All right. Can I hear you again? Is everybody ready for the practice task? Yes. All right. Woo! 
All right. So the practice test, we're going to start with something very simple. I will say one thing. Let me see this great piece for a second. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is called a plate. This is what you can build on if you like. The Lego plates come in all sizes. Or you can just use your table. It's entirely um, up to you. You can use this for something else. So you do have a table piece, so you can do that. All right, so the first task you have, and remember the number one rule for today is thinking with your hands, because there is a clock. And I'm going to give you two minutes, two minutes to build a bridge. Go. Two minutes to build a bridge. There's your countdown clock. Take a look at it. You'll hear a sound when you have the one minute warning. And so two minutes to build a bridge. No pressure. Just have some fun. I'll tell you why we're building a bridge in a little bit. Build a bridge. I'll run around and check out some stuff. So much fun. Some people like music when we're doing this. Other people just like silence so they can focus. I look forward to singing the bridges. people or not, it's entirely up to you. There's the one minute warning, so, yeah, so um, we're gonna just take a, a minute or so, I really wanna get to the other two things. What I think we will do in the interest of time, we'll probably just hold up the, um, the bridge and take a picture of them and just show it. I wanna make one observation about the uh, bridges in a second. <laughs> and when I count to three, I want everybody to hold their bridges up so I can take a picture of the room. And I'll tell you again why I asked for bridges. So three, two, one, hold the bridges up. Thank you, Steve. Look at these happy, happy people with the bridges. Woo! I think we got it. All right, thank you all so much. Now, why do I have you build a bridge? If you looked around the room at your, you know, or around your table with what everybody built, be aware of this. Every person in this room had the exact same 47 pieces. Yet none of our bridges were anything alike. When I walked around, the choices of pieces that you all made and the color of the pieces that you all chose to work with, all vastly different. The reason I have people build a bridge at the beginning is because if, when you think about caregiving, whether you are family or professional caregivers, sometimes we need to build bridges. We need bridges to services. We need bridges to family members who may not be helping us as they should. We need bridges to figure out, you know, what to do next or how to cross over. So I, I think that is an amazing thing to start with because everybody, you know, we all need a bridge in our, in our lives, you know, however we want to cross over. Thank you. A lot of you are nodding, and I appreciate that. So give yourselves a hand for the bridges. Thank you, you guys. That was fabulous, y'all rock. <laughs> Absolutely, so I hope you took some pictures. So now, first task, we're gonna do two tasks, you know, real quick. And so, go ahead and take that apart. And here is what we are going to build next. I want you to build a model that represents what gives you the most hope in caregiving. What gives you the most hope? Now, if you're a professional caregiver, you can still do that. What do you love most about what you do in your job? If you're a family caregiver, what gives you the most hope? And again, 
Don't think too much about the task. Just start building. Remember, we are thinking with our hands today. And this time, we're actually going to share when we get done. And so not only are you going to think with your hands, I'm going to ask you to sort of listen with your eyes. And you'll be looking at the person's model as they describe it. So three minutes for this one. Three minutes. And if your clock starts now. So build what gives you the most hope about caregiving or in your caregiving role. Lisa Dodson. Okay, tell us the story of your, what gives you hope. What gives me hope is love. And so my little heart is all the way on the top, and then these two folks are holding that together. Oh, oh that's so cool. Give her a hand. That is awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. So I want you to just at your table, start wherever you want, but I want everybody at the table to share what you built and go. Right. And then uh, whoever starts as well, you can just get a couple minutes to do that and then we'll start our next exercise. <laughs> want to share theirs with the entire group? Anybody want to share? All right. Yes, ma'am. Come on up. Yeah, please. Yeah. Please come on up here. This is fabulous. Come on up. Fabulous. Tell them what it is. Tell them your name. It looks easy, but um, it's a smile. Look. And that's what gives me hope is when I'm working with Isn't people. Isn't that cool? If they smile, <laughs> then that gives me hope to know that we're getting across to each other. Give her a hand for the smile. That was that's pretty good, y'all. Pretty good. Thank you all so much for doing that. Now listen, I uh, walked around and heard a lot of the stories and you know look at the smiling faces in this group telling everybody's telling their story I mean it's such a uh, an amazing thing and I loved what I heard I think the you know sort of themes you saw I saw a lot of community I saw aging together where's the aging together one Let, hold it up can you hold that one up look at that aging together that's pretty cool you got some holding hands so a lot of you used your people to represent you know the love that you're either giving or receiving or seeing I heard the word clients used a lot around the tables and so I think you know one of the things that is so <coughs> crushing at times about care giving is that we give up hope and we feel we are alone. So one of the things I would like for you to do is think back to this part of today and I hope you took a picture of what you built. Because on the really tough caregiving days, I want you to be able to remember some of you know what you did today. Had a very interesting thing, if you are not familiar with uh, Insight Memory Care, they're up in uh, near Dallas Airport and they work with um, uh, folks with dementia in early stage and I had done a um, thing for them and they had just newly diagnosed, they had just been diagnosed within six weeks and I went to do this mind-body workshop with them and one of the things I had them build, we do three rounds typically, it takes a couple hours and I um, asked them to build a model that represented how they were going to hold on to hope on the tough caregiving days and the woman who had paid my fee, she was there, they had invited her and so it was the staff and the nine couples and the, this woman from a mini memory care facility. And the couple that had been married the longest had been married for 50 years. And when it was their turn to share, they had Duplo bricks too because the couples were building together. And so they used a Duplo brick, which is the bigger one. So they had an orange one and a yellow one. And she stands up and she points 
to the orange one and then to the yellow one. And she says, on the tough caregiving days, we're going to think back on the 50 years of sunrises and sunsets that we have experienced together. When I tell you that I was the only one not crying in that room, I cried when I got to my car, but I did not cry in the room. And my mom had just died too, and that woman reminded me so much of my mom. And uh, I mean, that's stunning to be able to come up to that. And I, one of the reasons I cried was because, you know, in, in some respects, they have no idea what's coming. You know, just getting that diagnosis. But I loved that forward thinking. And so the beautiful part about this exercise is that you get to take these home too. And so I hope that you'll continue to build stuff. But when you think back to what you heard at your table, Try to remember what you know each of you shared and you know what is hopeful for you. It's a nasty disease, but we can always have hope. So your final task, here we go. Now, usually when I say this word to caregivers, they go, huh? I want you to build your superpower, those power that you are gonna use to help you maintain that hope as you go through the rest of this year in 2023. So build your superpower. And this is where some people get emotional too. Caregivers don't realize how many superpowers they actually have. So build your superpower that you are going to use to maintain your hope. And remember, you know, whatever you tell us it is, we're just going to say okay. And again, you get three minutes. so we can do a nice um, reflection. So here's, a, is it Adele? Yeah. All right, hold on. Hello everyone. My superpower is being an advocate for the elderly. I will fight for them in any direction, find resources, um, do whatever is necessary to make sure they, they have a good quality of life. All right. <laughs> Love that, she's got the little red thing. Who else wants to share? I'm Lorraine, and there's, this is two little two little people. Each they're sharing with each other, like they're each handing the other person something. And then the heart overall is God's love over all of us. Here we go. Right now. Woo all right, somebody. Had this. Hi, everybody. I'm Sophia. So. My superpower is I am tenacious. I will not give up. There is a problem. We're going to find a solution. We're going to find a communication. We're going to find a program. We're going to get it done. So that's my superpower. And I wanted to use them all. <laughs> Yes, I would not mess with her. There you go. David Chang. Um, and so the what I built was just, um, yeah, the ability to be present uh, with um, people and um, also be thinking about different things and wearing different hats um, in, in support of, I mean, maybe not as tenacious as you put it, <laughs> but thinking about different things uh, while, while still being present uh, with people. Oh, I love that. Being present. Now that is cool. What about way in the back there? Who back there wants to share? Way in the back. Somebody back there. Everybody's pointing at you on the end. Come on. Everybody see what happens when your table points you. Over there. Get up. Share. Here we go. All right. Here we go. Oh, that's okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna hold my thing. Okay, I'm gonna hold the face dynamic. Okay. I'm holding. It's done that. Hi, I'm Marie, and I have a background in physical therapy, and I feel like one of my superpowers is being able to hear and listen and look and see what does that person want oh, to do. That my they, eyes. Yeah, there's my eyes, which are also ears, and um, I want to hear what is something that they used to do that they really enjoy. They can't do it now because they might not have someone to do it with, might not have the time, or might not have the ability. So how can I break down the task, or the, the, the activity, to make it doable so it might be something like hitting a golf ball oh. might be something like going for a walk yeah. you know bringing the, bringing in a guitar bringing in um you know to that they used to do art things like that so i feel like that's my superpower wow yeah she was right that was dynamic had a little golf club and a little ball i, I was wondering what that yellow thing was going to be i didn't know i was holding on to it so that, very cool. Anybody else? All right. Who wants to go after that one? <laughs> All right, so my superpower is staying organized. I am an organized individual, and uh, I feel like for easy retrieval, it's a good thing when you're care caring for others. And then got a heart on my head because I do everything I do with love. Yeah! Heart on my head! Y'all are awesome. How was that? Wow, that was, <laughs> that was very cool. I love this group. This is part of Hopkins Elder Plus and Call to Care. And, you know, they were um, building hope and, you know, sort of love and joy on that day as well. Really um, cool group of folks, but I'm so glad. It works very well online too, but I am just thrilled to be in this room with you, being able to walk around and seeing the creativity. I, I think the... Um, that one of the best things about Lego Serious Play is things come to you while you are using your hands and you're sort of building the story as you go. And I think one, you know, several people asked me as I was going around, you know, can they just, you know, do this to some of their seniors? And the answer is yes. So a couple of words of caution while you have your things still together, and I'll, and then I'll do a reflection. The little pieces. Uh, whenever I'm going to do a session with folks with dementia. I take the eyes out and I add the Duplo bricks. So we do want to, you know, remember that, that the pieces that look really small, you want to take those out if you're going to do that. When people ask me what kits I use, think about the creative boxes in Walmart, sometimes even the dollar store and Target. A creative box doesn't have instructions. You just want pieces for them. And if you can get the Duplo creative box as well. But what we really want to try to do is just allow them to use your hand, their hands in the same way you just did. I mean, it can be really inspirational, the looks on your faces as each of you were sharing and listening to the other stories. There's a lot of power in that. You all are cheering for each other and encouraging each other. And what I think this methodology reinforces is, you know, how awesome we can be together. So even if you work alone, you can think back to that crazy woman Loretta had us building all this stuff, but we sure did have fun. And so I just want you to try and, you know, remember that. So superpowers, why did I ask you to build that? I think, you know, as I mentioned as I was going around, one of the things people say about me and my superpower is that it is, you know, energy. And that probably is true. It is absolutely one of my strengths that, um, you know, I'm guessing I got from my father because my I always seem to be giving energy to my mom. So I think what I try to use as I go around and as I was trying to listen to your stories is using that in a way that will continue to empower people. And so when um, Ellen told me the title, of this section, it, it was just amazing that because it was going to be in person, it gave me so much hope that I not only was going to get to work with, you know, 50 people, this is a great group, but also that I could hear a lot more stories that I can share with others. Because when you go into some towns where uh, it's very small and they don't, you know, maybe have a lot of services, you know, we have to infuse different things into them ourselves. Sometimes we're all 
other people see. And I want us to remember that too. But I want you to think about the stories that we heard. The heart was in just about every piece we saw, which is why I add that. Everything you all do is with love. But I also want you to remember that it is also important to love ourselves. So whenever I do this, whether it's first thing in the morning or, you know, last thing in the afternoon, is to remind us of that. We all have superpowers, whether we can name it or not. And so as you look at your, you know, pieces that you built, I hope you will pull out those photos on the, you know, not so great caregiving days and think back. And some of you even built uh, models that represented what you're carrying from folks who are no longer here. And that, of course, is the situation that I'm in as well. I think one of the things that, um, you know, we throw around the word legacy a lot, but I am having people build sort of their legacy these days too. So both based hope and superpowers and all of those kinds of things rolled into one thing. So as you, you know, go away from here and as we continue on learning for the rest of today, I hope this will give us ideas of creativity, of sharing, of bond, you know, sort of bonding together to provide the best services, whatever those services are that we provide for the people that we serve. And so I hope that will be something that you'll be able to hold on to, you know, for a long time. So, hmm, the, probably the favorite thing about this journey with my mom was how long it lasted. You know, when you hear that word dementia, you have no idea how long it will be. And you know, funny, Ellen told you the name of the book, being my mom's mom, and I, I will be 100% transparent with you and say, the primary reason I wrote that book is because I thought my mother would outlive my money. <laughs> yeah, they live a long time in my family. My great-grandmother missed her 107th birthday by two weeks. Wow. At 100, she was still looking for a man. <laughs> she was in love with this guy that was 95. He was a pastor because she liked them young, so yeah. <laughs> so when my mom was 77, you know, I'm bad in math, but I was trying to make that addition. I'm like 77, 100. I, I was pretty sure my mother would live to be 100. So here's the thing. And here's why I do this, and I think this legacy that my mom and I have, you know, we had it for a reason. So that picture you're looking at, those six bricks, here they are. I take them everywhere. That picture was taken about seven hours before my mother died. So if on my last day, <clears throat> I'm still in love with these, that's a thing. And you know, people used to always say, well, you know, the funny part of that story is, on March 23rd, you know, they rushed her to the hospital and I was told she was in liver failure and she had days to live. I said, oh no. And my mother's greatest wish was call hospice. I don't want any testing, I don't want anything. I don't want to die in the hospital, just call hospice. Okay, so I call hospice. Hospice shows up in 40 minutes. They take her back to the uh, group home where she lived. And so, you know, a couple of days came, she was still here, so they were like, call the family and stuff. And I had called the family previously to say she was dying. They were like, okay, she really dying this time. I mean, like, she just... <laughs> so, and so that was March 23rd, and so I'm thinking, of, you know, what am I going to get mom for Mother's Day? And the hospice nurse says, your mother is not going to be here on Mother's Day. Mm. Uh-huh, well, um, clearly, she did not get the memo that she was dying, because I got the 10 bonus months, and she lived all the way to January. So that's, if you follow us on Facebook or LinkedIn, you know uh, that we called her Wonder Woman. And so she got the Wonder Woman name because when she was still alive on uh, Mother's Day, thank goodness for overnight delivery from Amazon, I got her a Wonder Woman blanket. And then I took a picture of it and sent it to the hospice nurse, like, don't count my mother out. <laughs> Talk about 
that. And so what, what's amazing, though, about that story is that, you know, I really didn't know how many people were following it all. So, yeah, she's still here for Christmas. So I added the socks and the, you know, the uh, coffee mug and the Christmas stock. It was hysterical, all Wonder Woman. And amazingly, when she died, you know, they, the uh, crew, uh, the Good Morning America crew who came out to do the filming, you know, they kept, my mom was really with it that day. Like I told you, you know, she said she was famous. And they kept telling her how good she looked. And they said, oh, we're going to come back for your 93rd birthday. And of course, she died two weeks before. So when the producers called Robin and say, Wonder Woman died, she was like, what? She did a Betty White dying before your birthday. It's like, oh, man, all these plans. I, I thought they were kidding. I did, had no idea she was going to come back. But the real piece I want you to take from this is that when you are working, you have no idea who's watching you. And, you know, my mother's dream was always to travel, but she never went anyway. She never got further than, you know, New York City, although that is a great place to go. But she wanted to travel all over the world. She never did. And as my husband and I traveled, she said she traveled vicariously, you know, through us. And, you know, as people started to pass away, my mother outlived almost everybody. Her siblings, my sister, my husband. My sister and my husband died on the same day, five years apart. And it was just like me and her, I'm like, Lord, don't let me get COVID or something and die. Like, oh. But all these people had no idea, you know, that now I'm like the, almost the only person in the family. Yeah. So you're kind of like, oh, you don't want anything to happen with that. But I think, you know, if, if she was still here, she was like, wow, we sure did reach a lot of people we just never knew. When she died, not only did Robin Roberts put up a big thing that, you know, announcing that Wonder Woman had died, they made this huge donation to the Alzheimer's Association. and. My next door neighbor was trying to keep up with what people were saying. So the person who never went anywhere but wanted to travel, we got condolences from 18 different countries when she died, including Qatar. Most people don't even know what that is. This young man from Sri Lanka sends me a thing. I, then I was on his podcast a few months later. He says, Loretta, you saved our family. We got some Lego bricks and my grandma talked for the first time in six years. Who knew that boy had never commented on a thing I ever put together? You know, we heard from um, Nigeria and all through the UK, New Zealand. I had a birthday party, a Lego birthday party for my mother. And people came from the Netherlands where it was two in the morning and New Zealand and all that. But I had no idea how many people were reading and reflecting and doing all these things as I carried on that legacy. And I told you I quit my job in 2021 and I only did that because so many people were calling about adult day activities and you know, when they were closed, Loretta, what are we gonna do with mom or dad? So I'll spend hours on the phone every day teaching people how to do <laughs> these things. So I was finally like, I gotta quit my job. But I think in all seriousness, this is the job I am called to do. Whether I reach, you know, five people or 10 people or 20 people, and I think she would just be thrilled. The last day, uh, like maybe a couple hours after that picture was taken, she kept trying to hand me something. I never knew what that was. And, you know, my pastor eventually said, I think she was, you know, passing the job on to you. She kept doing this over and over and over. And I kept sticking my hand out and she would open her hand into mine. And she did this over and over. And so I think I got the message. And so one of the things that I hope I leave you with is, you know, something that bag is resealable. You can throw those things back in the bag and take them on home with you. And people actually rebuild. There was a woman who came a few weeks ago to a session. She was very honest. She said, I'm so mean to my husband. I yell at him all the time because I'm not sleeping. He wanders all night long. And I just yell, yell, yell. I said, she said, do you have a suggestion? I said. Next time before you yell, why don't you try to build with the Lego bricks more patience? And she said, okay. So last week, Tuesday, I guess it was, she sends me this picture. And she said, hey, Loretta, I was up all night again. My husband was wandering as always, but this time I didn't yell. And here is my picture of patience. And she built this model of, you know, just the bricks on top of each other as in, you know, counting to 10 or, you know, taking a pause and, you know, taking a higher road and sort of arguing. And all of those things just, you know, fill me with joy. And, you know, I, I think 
I scare people sometimes when I used to always talk about, I speak so much, most, most of my presentations are about joy. <laughs> and people kept saying to me, I don't understand why you're so joyful. Your mother is dying. Yeah, she is. But it ain't gonna be today. So when I drove away from the group home where she was, I always drove away saying, we sure did have a good time. And if they had called in the middle of the night to say she was gone, I would be feeling like, hmm, I did my thing exactly as I promised her. And 10 minutes before she died, we put them Wonder Woman socks on her because she earned those socks. And so every time I get the Lego bricks out and I'm building something, I was like, yep, that's for you. And so I hope that as she looks down, she is so proud that I not only still have hope that there is going to be a cure for this crazy thing at one, you know, someday. But until then, I'm going to be fierce and I'm going to be out here doing all of these things. But, and so I hope what you have been able to experience today is hope. And I hope you will go away taking your superpower with you and sharing it with other people more than anything. I just want to thank you for being here today and helping me honor Miss Darts. Mm -hmm. And I hope that you'll be able to carry lots of hope as you leave here today. Thank you all so much.